Good morning. I call to order the November 22, 2023 Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting. Administrator Gary Schmidt, would you please call the roll? Yes, Chair Smith, thank you. First, our staff support today, clerk to the board, Tony Marinick, County Council, Stephen Madcor. Commissioner Schrader is out of the office today. Roll call, Commissioner Schull. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Savas. Present. Chair Smith. Here, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. We are holding this meeting in person and virtually. If you've joined us via Zoom for this meeting, we will prompt you how to do that when the time is right. General public comment will be taken at the usual allotted time. I would like to remind all participants, including staff, all elected officials, and members of the public, that Robert's Rules of Order will be used during this business meeting. We welcome your opinions and look forward to your polite participation. Today's business meeting is one day earlier than usual because tomorrow is Thanksgiving and county offices will be closed in observance. Gary, can you introduce the first item, please? Yes, Chair Smith. First today is the consent agenda. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Elected officials, item one, approval of previous business meeting minutes for the Board of County Commissioners. Transportation and Development, item one, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation for a research project to inform the county's work on reducing driving under the influence. Grant value is $50,000 for one year with matching funds of $12,712, funding through state grant and matching funds through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Transportation for the Safe Communities Renew Grant Renewal. The grant value is $25,000 for one year with matching funds of $6,893.38 funding through state grant, matching funds through the county road fund. No county general funds are involved. Item three, approval of a guaranteed maximum price contract with PNC Construction for construction of Concord Park, park shelter, splash pad, and site work. Amendment value is $4,633,620. Total value is increased to $4,638,881. Funding through Metro Local Share Grant, Hoodview, Hoodview Park Disposition Proceeds, North Clackamas Park and Recreation District System Development Charge Funds, and the NCPRD General Fund. No county general, general funds are involved. Juvenile Item 1, Approval of Amendment 1, to a grant agreement with the Oregon Department of Education for Juvenile Crime Prevention Services. Amendment value is $495,377 for two years. Agreement value is increased to $970,625 for four years. Funding is through the Oregon Department of Education. No county general funds are involved. Health, Housing, Human Services, Item 1, approval of a subrecipient blueprint grant with Providence Willamette Falls Medical Center for the better outcome through Bridges Program. Agreement value is $54,715.40 for six months, funding through Health Share of Oregon and Trillium Community, Plan, Community Health Plans. No county general funds are involved. Item 2, approval of a personal services contract with Focus Strategies Company for technical assistance and strategic planning for homeless services in rural Clackamas County. Agreement value is $400,000 for four years. Funding is through budgeted county general funds. Item three, approval of amendment number one, increasing funding and duration of a revenue lease agreement with Pro Project Quest. Amendment value is $20,000 for four years. Agreement value is increased to $40,000 for eight years. Funding is through Project Quest. No county general funds are involved. Item four, approval of amendment number one, increasing funding and duration of a subrecipient agreement with Microenterprise Services of Oregon for the Economic Development Project. Amendment value is $82,300 for seven months. Agreement value is increased to $164,600 for 19 months. Funding through Federal Community Development Block Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Item five, approval of amendment number six, increasing funding and duration of an expense 
intergovernmental agreement with the City of Lake Oswego for ambulance services. Amendment value is $43,368.48 for one year. Agreement value is $247,803.72 over 10.67 years. Funding through cost savings program with AMR Northwest. No county general funds are involved. Item 6, approval of a property transfer intergovernmental agreement between the Clackamas County Development Agency and Clackamas County. Negotiated acquisition price is $799,300. Funding through Metro Supportive Housing Services funds. No county general funds are involved. County administration. Item 1, cooperation agreement with the Clackamas County Arts Alliance for artwork to be placed in the replacement courthouse. No fiscal impact. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of change order number eight with Clackamas Progress Partners, LLC, for the replacement county courthouse. Change order net value is $72,858.45. Leaving credits is $663,780.35. Funding is through credits from previous change orders, which include budgeted county general funds. Finance, item one, approval of amendment number one to a public improvement contract with Professional Services Industries Incorporated, Intertech, for account courthouse special inspection testing. Amendment value is $187,680. Total contract value is increased to $335,065. Funding through budgeted county general funds and eligible for 50% reimbursement from the Oregon Courthouse Capital Construction and Improvement Fund. County Council Item 1, approval of a settlement agreement with Robert Escudero and Clackamas County Employees Association to resolve litigation related to employment at the Clackamas County Juvenile Department. Total value is $325,000. Funding through Clackamas County Juvenile Department, County Administration, and County Risk Funds, which include $162,500 of county general funds. Item 2. <laughs> Approval of Amendment Number 1 to the Intergovernmental Agreement with North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District related to construction at the Oak Lodge Library. No fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. Thank you, Tony. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything off the consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Commissioner West has moved we approve the consent agenda and Commissioner Savas has second the motion. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, Tony, would you please call the poll? Commissioner Schull? Aye. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 4 0. I will now recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as a Water Environment Services Board of Directors. Gary. This is the consent agenda for Water Environment Services. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Two items. Item one, approval of a contract with Mit Mitchell's Trenchless Incorporated for the collection system and rehabilitation project. Total value is $1,174,349 for eight months. Funding through Water Environment Services Sanitary Sewer Construction Fund. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of amendment number two with Brown and Brown of Oregon LLC for comprehensive insurance, brokerage, and risk management consulting services. Amendment value is $165,124. For four years, contract value is increased to $277,768 for six years. Funding through Water Environment Services, Sanitary Sewer, and Service Water Operating Funds. No county general funds are involved. Thank you. Does any director wish to remove any item off of this consent agenda? I'll entertain a motion. Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Director West has moved approval of the consent agenda, and Director Savas has second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, please take the poll. Director Schull? Aye. Director Savas? Aye. Director West? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 4-0. I will now adjourn as a Water Environment Services Board and convene as a North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Board. Gary, what's next? Next is the consent agenda for the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? One item. Approval of amendment number one to the intergovernmental agreement of Clackamas County related to construction of the Oak Lodge Library. No fiscal impact. No county general funds are involved. Thank you. Does any commissioner wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? 
Excuse me, any director? Seeing none, does I'll entertain a motion. I move uh, to approve the consent agenda for North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District. Seconded. Uh, Director Savas has moved approval of the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District consent agenda, and Director Scholl has seconded the motion. Any further discussion? See none. Tony, please take the poll. Director West? Aye. Director Scholl? Aye. Director Savas? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you very much. I will now adjourn as the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District Board and convene as the Clackamas County Development Agency Board of Directors. Gary. Next is the consent agenda for the Development Agency. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? One item, approval of a property transfer intergovernmental agreement between the Clackamas County Development Agency and Clackamas County. Negotiated acquisition price is $799,300. Funding is through Metro Supportive Housing Services Fund. No county general funds are involved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, does any director wish to remove any item? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move for approval of the Development Agency consent agenda. I will second. Director Scholl has moved approval of the development agency consent agenda and Director West has second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Tony, would you please take the poll? Director Savas. Aye. Director West. Aye. Director Scholl. Aye. Chair Smith. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. I will now adjourn as Development Agency Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners. And holy cow, we are a public communication already. Yep, we're speeding along. Not mad at it. This portion of the agenda shall be limited to items of county business, which are properly the object of the board consideration and should be nonpartisan in nature, as the BCC is a nonpartisan governing body under order revised statutes and county code. Testimony is limited to three minutes. Comments shall be respectful and courteous to all. As a reminder, you can email submissions for public communication at bcc at clackamas.us, and these will be accepted as part of the public record. I will now open the meeting for public testimony. I will take in-person testimony first. Clerk, excuse me. First of all, I got ahead of myself. There is nobody in the room, and I see no in-person testimony. Correct. Thank you. Tony, is there anyone online via Zoom? If you would like to testify, please use the raise hand feature, and I will call on you in the order received. Madam Chair, do not have any hands raised. Thank you. I will now close the public testimony portion of this meeting and move on. Chair, I have a question. Yes, sir. Tony, how many people are present online that are external from the county? Zero at the moment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good question. Cozy yeah. day with y'all. <laughs> it was just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> just a guess. Yeah. Well, there are so Tony's looking at the Zoom. There's also a YouTube we aired live. There may be people uh, on YouTube right, watching. Of course. Yeah. And we don't know who's on right, that. Right. Okay. People will watch it later. All right. Thank you. I was just ask, asking the question in the context of public comment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gary, what's next? Next is county administrator update. That's me. And if you if you like, I can skip my report so you can have the second shortest meeting ever, or I can go forward. What would you it's like? not going to be the shortest. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Paul has a report. I thank think. you. Thank you. So I, I like to, I like to use my time to talk about the good work our county employees do. And on this day before Thanksgiving, I'd like to share two great examples as of the many I hope I share with you already all year long. So today. Our County Parks and Forestry Division staff team members, or senior management analyst, Christina Dannenbring, recently received the Lasting Impact Award at the Oregon Recreation and Park Association Annual Conference. This association supports recreation and park professionals in Oregon through leadership, education, and advocacy. Christina was honored for her dedication and commitment to public lands her keen eye for numbers and details, and her immense knowledge of finances and administration in the park and forestry field. So congratulations, Christina Dannenbring from our County Parks and Forestry Division in Transportation and Development for this statewide award. Oh, excellent. Next, our a staff member, uh, Colette Stiff, who is a mental health services coordinator in the Behavioral Health Division of Health, Housing, and Human Services, received a very nice compliment from one of the clients she supports, a single mother of a disabled child. 
This person wrote about Colette. I'd like to compliment my son's care coordinator, Colette Stiff. She has been with my family for almost a year. Once she stepped in, it took so much stress off my shoulders knowing that she was there to support us. Mm -hmm. She attended every meeting I needed her to, and if she was unavailable, she made sure someone else sat in by my side. She has gone above and beyond for us. While many professionals walked away from my son, when I needed help the most, Colette was always there making sure we were okay. As a single mother who works hard to help my child with his disability, it gets scary navigating muddy waters. But Colette has always been there supporting us. She is truly good at her job. She is a great advocate for those who need help. Please give her praise and let her know that her kindness does not go unseen. So thank you to Colette and all of our staff in that division who work every day to support those most vulnerable in our community. That's just wonderful news. So those are my two stories. Of course, the day before Thanksgiving, I do want to thank all of the county staff, over 2,500 employees who work hard every day to support the public, to support you commissioners, to make sure the public gets what they need from their county government. That is my report for today. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Gary. It's wonderful to hear about our county employees. Now it's up to Commissioner Communication. Uh, first is Commissioner West. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to, um, I don't want the meeting to be too long now, so I'll, I'll be brief. But I, I, it's Thanksgiving, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and with, with those that I really care about and with our family, we always try to tell a little bit of things that we're thankful for. Um, and this is ending my first year as a county commissioner, so I'm really thankful for the opportunity to serve the public here in Clackamas County. And it's been a wonderful opportunity, and I look forward to doing it moving forward. Um, and then I'm super thankful for uh, my wonderful family and the great time we're going to be able to spend this week together. And I hope everybody out in the community also has an opportunity to have a very blessed weekend um, as we move into the holiday season. And I will leave my comments at that. Thank you, Commissioner West. Commissioner Sabas, you're up. Uh, thank you. If you'll all indulge me, I just uh, want to just uh, share a number of things and give you some historical perspective as well as I do this. Um, I've been um, involved in my public service for about 25 years and um, elected in different capacities uh, in a majority of that time over 20 years on special districts. So I've attended transportation meetings for the last 25 years, land use meetings, a number of things, metro meetings and so forth. And um, I have found um, that there's not a great understanding of how decisions are made in this region as it comes to land use policies, wastewater, water, transportation, and so on. And, you know, during that time, um, you know, we live under two big plans, one of them being the Metro 2040 plan, which is currently the one in place, and also the uh, Regional Transportation Plan and several others I won't, make, I won't name at this particular time. So I've, you know, really participated one way or another in all of these different studies, uh, the RTP especially. So this year, um, and I've been hoping for change and suggested change early on that we approach it differently, um, not in the same paradigm. Um, and look around us, folks, how are things going as it relates to either homelessness, poverty, um, land use issues, um, you know, housing availability, the price of housing available, and why. And of course, transportation when it relates to congestion and, and this um, tolling program that is being forced down our throats. Um, so, uh, you know, my comments again at the beginning of the RTP process at the beginning was, you know, let's have a discussion about, you know, how we're doing this and maybe there ought to be some context of the vision and the guidelines. I made a recommendation that I've made before in other contexts, and that was a comment or a vision statement that or some kind of a mission that we will have a regionally balanced transportation system in the region. That is what regionalism is all about, right? It, you know, and there's, of course, there's going to be gaps, and of course, there's going to be disparities, right? And you know, we are preceded by many county commissioners that preceded us, dating back to, the, to when Metro was first formed, as well as TriMet. Um, anyhow, those, that, that language, which was along the lines of we should strive for a regionally balanced transportation system, has not, I've not been successful in getting that embedded as, as, a, as a, uh, a, a criteria or a mission statement or anything else. So uh, last Thursday was the JPAC meeting, uh, which sends its uh, recommendation to the Metro Council to uh, approve the RTP. And um, 
everyone came there, I think. Not, well, I would say most of, most of my colleagues around the table came there prepared for their vote on this. And um, uh, there were amendments that were made at the impact meeting. Commissioner Scholl was part of that. Um, there were some additions made by Councilor Sherman, others, uh, um, and including Mayor Buck as well. So the big one that ODOT had pushed back on was the Buck Amendment. And we all worked together um, as a region and talked to other members and said, yeah, I, I, just, I just express my, to other people outside of Clackamas County, please come there with an open mind. You know, just consider the conversation. Let's have that conversation. And um, that's really not really what, there was not much of a conversation that actually took place. So long story short, the RTP was approved. I made the, um, again, I made a motion for, in the end, for the, for the amendment. Um, well, I'll digress. I made, we, the Buck Amendment failed. ODOT. So it was offered but failed. It was offered but failed. And ODOT, it was in their favor. It was for, it was kind of a self-serving one. Uh, no one else made the motion, but ODOT made the motion. Um, and to basically dismiss the, the Buck Amendment, followed by, you know, the amendment that I had made, which is simply some language, high level, no cost, but a high level policy statement that we will, in, under the fill, fill the gaps in the transportation system, that we would add language to strive to, well, not that, those aren't not the exact words, but essentially that's what it meant. And there was pushback and it, it didn't go anywhere and it failed. So I voted, voted no overall in the RTP. Uh, there's a lot of that stuff I agreed with in the RTP and a lot of stuff I did not agree with. But I thought principally um, that those were two big issues that I thought would, um, at least one of them, getting some recognition, I would have voted for the RTP. But that didn't happen. And a lot of, and, and to, to, at the beginning of the meeting, um, I realized that not only was a pretty good attendance at the JPAC table, but there were no materials in the room. Oh, now, really? all the years, all the years that I have gone to these meetings, when you go to a JPAC meeting or MPAC meeting, you walk in the room, there's a table, and you see there, it's a sign-in table, and also the table where all the materials are laid out. If there's letters, public comment that came in previously, it's on the table. Um, it's also, those materials are on, on the table around the room, call it the dais, if you will. Um, where all the members of JPAC sit, and the materials are there as well, um, preloaded, so you all have your information. And I noticed that there was no, there was, there was nothing on the table. As a matter of fact, you know, well, Ryan Winsheimer, I got to give him credit. He had a big stack of the RTP documents about that, well, about that high, folks. Um, and I came in there with my documents that are relevant to the comments, and so I had a lot of paper on my desk, and Ryan had a lot of paper on his, and there was a couple others that had a. a piece of paper or two, but for the most part, there was nothing in front of them. And we're approving the minutes. There is no minutes. And you know, there was, you know, Mayor Buck, for example, he, had, he was sitting next to me. He had his laptop, so he's reading the agenda item, but I'm looking around. So he's at least got a non-paper copy, right? He's at least looking at what's there. But what had happened the night before, before the cutoff was, is that you submit public comment before four o'clock and that public comment is submitted to, um, in the packet. It wasn't in the packet. So um, Mayor Rory Bliostowski and, um, and Mayor Denise McGriff had, their, Mayor Denise McGriff sent hers after four o'clock. But anyhow, um, when I made the comment, how come there's no material? You know, this is, this is unusual. There's always an agenda item. There's always something. And we're approving the We had already proven the minutes, and there's just no material and no discussion. So anyhow, they, they, they at least printed off the agenda, two-page agenda. And uh, at 8.10, the meeting started at 7.30. At 8.10, um, the public comment that was submitted before and after 4 o'clock came in at 8.10, 40 minutes after the meeting, after really, and, and no one had a chance to read it. So, so Mayor Belistowski came in person to testify, but he didn't read the entire thing because it was too long. Uh, so, he, you know, that we, it, was, it was just awkward that there was no material. I didn't, really didn't feel that with all this work that we would have a lot of, I thought, constructive discussion, um, but that was not the case. All to say, I think that, you know, granted, we are maybe a little bit out of step with COVID and things have been displaced, but as I look around the room, I realized that I've been around here the longest, around that table, right? And I maybe, maybe these folks don't remember that, but, but at least from a paperwork standpoint, it, it feels as though there should have been more 
substance and material in, in front of us. Granted, the RTP document, if we all had it, I don't know exactly how thick it is if you stacked all the papers, but Ryan said that was his. Um, so I, I, sorry if I spent a lot of time on that, but it just seems that for the significance of what this transportation plan is, that there was never, frankly, uh, a really, any kind of a, you know, one, two, three hour discussion about the high level policies. Um, it's usually staff presentation after staff presentation, and then maybe a couple questions. Oh, we got to move it on the agenda, and, and then so there's not really a lot of opportunity for dialogue. And and there were some times that were the dialogue. There was opportunity for the dialogue, but we, it wasn't queued up as such for that dialogue. So I, I share with you that as with 25 years of my public service and seeing meetings go very, very well, that are very well prepared for and seeing what is taking place currently, I, there's a big disparity, frankly, in process. And that, that bothers me quite a bit. Um, I appreciate what took place at MPAC was far more robust discussion than at JPAC. But, but the MPAC um, is only, is, is a less of a recommendation than JPAC because it gets submitted to get submitted to, to, to the Metro Council, but they don't have to approve that, right? They only have to approve the JPAC one. So you think that we have more discussion, but not. The comments that followed after my motion failed for that, basically that regional balance, uh, after my comments failed, the comments that were made by others indicated to me that there is no interest in filling those gaps, that the criteria does not allow those gaps to be filled. And so I asked myself, after asking for some very basic transit solutions like shuttles and buses, you know, nothing fancy, nothing expensive like light rail, right. just the basic stuff, the basic transit, um, that it's, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's been 25 years. We've asked for one, th you know, just one example of one thing, and it's still 25 years later, nothing. It just isn't happening. The legislature passed in 27, HB 2017, they passed some language in there that said um, that transit funding under STIF, State Transportation mm -hmm. um, Infrastructure, you know, whatever, I forgot the exact terminology, that instead of the, how TriMet's funded is they take the employee tax and each employer pays a TriMet tax for that employee, right? <laughs> and so I, as an employer myself, I submitted that, I paid for that. Um, but it was where the employer was located based, is based on, you know, where that is. Well, th this STIF language in HB 2017 changed that formula and said, you know what, people might be able to get to Portland or Washington County maybe on a line, but really people that are where, live where they live, Clackamas County or Washington County on the remote, where they don't have transit, we need to fill that gap. That's one of the gaps. We need to fill that gap. Well, that went to the state. I was excited because finally we got some money, right? When HB 2017, we get some money for transit. And the, 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 I would call it the rhetoric. I'm going to call it for what it is. The rhetoric for years has been, oh, Clackamas County is not going to use transit. They don't use transit. They don't use transit. You know, they're, they're conservative out there. You know, they're not of this particular type, so on. And I, I think, well, you know, every time I hear that, I say, if I have the opportunity, I say, well, you know, geez, it's funny because, you know, Canby's pretty conservative. You know, Canby is pretty rural, yet they formed their own transit agency. Wilsonville. And Malala, yep. South County, and Sandy, Wilsonville. and Smart. Wilsonville. Yep. They all did it. Why they do it? Because it wasn't being delivered. There wasn't any, they, if they didn't do it on their own, it yep. wouldn't happen. We do it better. And, and Wilsonville, better. Wilsonville, for example, is, does a great job. So there's been discussions maybe about expanding. Um, and what if Wilsonville expanded beyond Wilsonville boundaries? And they're doing a lot of things beyond their boundaries, by the way. But but what if, you know, what if we change that whole dynamic? So, um, uh, that concern I have about not filling the gaps and my responses back to them tells me that the criteria in which this RTP was planned basically disqualifies a lot of funding and transportation projects for Clackamas County because maybe where the, the average family income is higher in Clackamas County than others, um, or maybe we're not as diverse in our population or makeup of our population perhaps. And, and those you can read into that, you, not just read into it, but you can read it for what it is. But I, I won't go any deeper other than to say that um, Essentially, 
I made the point in response to that, well, geez, um, if you are a low-income person who is of a different racial makeup um, and you are trying to get to work in Wilsonville and you live in Portland, but there's no connection between Portland and Wilsonville, how does that, how, you don't, not serving that, we're not an island, right? If we are going to have a, a, an effective transportation system for all people, for all, of all races, of all make in, uh, income levels, how are they going to, how are they going to get to work if we're, we're not ever going to qualify, essentially, I'm paraphrasing my comments. So I walked out of that room very, very um, disappointed and uh, sensing that this regional system that we have, whether it's TriMet or whether it is Metro itself, is not working for us, right? And it's not building the path that, that you know, I, we hear our folks ask for. Um, Washington County, I got to give them credit, but they have a, a unique funding mechanism for transportation we don't have. So they're able to use their dollars to fund studies and everything else. So they funded a study here about four or five years ago called their multimodal study. And then we had funded our transit study. They did theirs after we initiated ours. Uh, theirs was a little bit different. It was broader and it looked at tolling. It looked at all these things. And in that study, um, they said, um, Tolling is not a good idea on Highway 217, but maybe look at Highway 26 because it would cause too much diversion on Highway 217. Uh, well, we didn't do such a study. Of course, maybe we should do such a study, right? And ODOT staff said to Senator Meek, Senator Mark Meek, who has really been really at the forefront, standing up on this tolling issue. He's said, uh, and passion, he's been very passionate about it, that you know, in a meeting. Um, he asked ODOT staff, why aren't you tolling 217? And Travis Brower referred to that study and said, well, they found out it was too much diversion. Well, isn't that, is that, isn't that what we're, we're discovering here today that along 205, somewhere. right? We have no transit, yeah. right? Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of disparities in the level, level of service. I'm sorry if I'm going on, on for so long, but I think that we, we, need, we need to, to really look at this whole thing different. Are we being advantaged by being in, being in this regional um, construct? Um, is, you know, if you look at the, the who votes at the JPAC table. So in, we're an MPO, which is a federal designate. It's very complex, I'm sorry for this, but we have the unique structure here that there's nowhere else duplicated in the country of all the MPOs in the country. And so at the JPAC table, the state essentially has four votes at the JPAC table. And I'm going to be very careful because the governor appoints these folks or, they, or they're a department head. Four votes at the JPAC table. Four votes at the JPAC table. So the governor appoints the TriMet board. Okay. So that, I consider that a state vote, right, in a sense. You know, in a way, it's a state vote. ODOT is there, they have a vote, that's a state agency. DEQ is a state agency, they have a vote. And I'm leaving one off. I'll remember what that is here momentarily. And then there's three JPAC, or no, three Metro councilors that have a vote, and the gavel is always in the control of Metro. The Metro council always gavels it. There's a conflict of interest in that structure, that makeup. And then there's, there's two representatives from each county. Um, Clackamas County gets a commissioner vote and, and a city representative represents the, the cities for city vote, as does Washington County. But Multnomah County is a little bit different. They get a city vote. In this case, the mayor of Gresham sits it there, um, representing the cities of Multnomah County. And then Multnomah County gets a vote, with the exception that Portland gets his own vote. So it's, 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 it's so you get an extra, extra vote there as well. So all to say that those cards are not really set up to, to really um, work in, a, I, th I think, a constructive favor for, I think, the robust di the dialogue that really needs to take place. When I sat on MPAC, um, I'll go back to MPAC momentarily, the discussions were far more ro robust, almost always, than they were at JPAC. And I, I thought it would be the opposite. I, I really thought, as, as significant as this is. So, um, I, I just want to just lay that out for you all to consider. And as I talk to people, whether they're on the Oregon Transportation Commission or their state legislators, and, and recently, right, I'm hearing a lot of concern or questions being asked, how are decisions made? How are decisions made on transportation? And if I was to draw you a picture of all the organizations and committees on how decisions are made, it would take up this wall. 
And I did that years ago for special districts. Uh, I, had, we had a, I had a whiteboard that was approximately, no exaggeration, 16 feet long. And I started drawing it for the special districts meeting I had that I was chairing. And I started drawing. And I ended up using the entire board. And people came in there and said, oh my god. I go, if I made a mistake, please help me if I made a mistake. You know, I had, had people there from SDAO, the Special Districts Association in Oregon. So just special districts was it took up a 16-foot whiteboard, oh right, of all the, all the organizations that factor into this. So on transportation, it's far more than that. On land use, it's far more than that. It's too complex. The public doesn't understand it, and I'm finding that elected officials don't understand it. And I, I don't think that's um, working out for us in the state. If we had high employment, if we had less poverty, if we had less homeless, if we had a working functioning transportation system, if we had transit everywhere, uh, if we had, you know, weren't, weren't one of the worst in congestion in the nation, if we had a lot of metrics that showed in our favor, there wouldn't be a problem. But how's it working out for us as a region, as a state? How's this system working? And I argue it isn't working very well. I just want to express my 25 years of experience and frustration. And I, I, I tell people um, this paradigm, in this paradigm, it is not working. And I think we need to look at it a lot differently um, and not do it in a way, my, my opinion, not do it in a way where it's adversarial. I think it needs to be constructive because at the end of the day, are we being advantaged? Or are we being disadvantaged? And who in the region is being advantaged? And who in the region is being disadvantaged by this system? And I argue when I see homeless people, whether they're you know, walking down my street where I live, or in my neighborhood, or they're walking in Portland, and I see more poverty than ever before, I, I would say that we're all being disadvantaged. Yeah, wow. Commissioner West. Commissioner Savas, thank you. I mean, I always learn so much from you, especially with the complications around transportation. And Clackamas County has such an asset in somebody that's been doing this for so dang long. And, um, and you did a really great job laying that out. I just spurred a couple questions for me and asked the chair if we could bounce some questions off you since we have time. So um, you said it was voted, so basically it was voted down. The amendment was basically to have some type of just regional equitable balance around transportation. And is that what the amendment, uh, uh, Mayor Buck's amendment was, or your amendment was, or could you clarify what these amendments were? Is my first question. Yeah, that was my that one there, but it was my amendment. The re just just a basic high level looking for balance amongst the region, and that, and that was shot down. Regionally balanced transportation just, system is what you wanted. Yeah, that I, just seems so intuitive, almost like it. Who would ever fight that? Why? Like it just is painful to realize. That yeah, that and, be a priority. and the, the, the language where it's inserted in the language has varied over the years, but essentially the concept the same is, is, is how we get to a balanced transportation system or striving to, right? Not, not a mandate. You know, I use the word, in this case, I use the word prioritize under, under transportation gaps, right, under uh -huh. that, that category. I used to use the word prioritize. Well, prioritize, if you think about that word, it doesn't mean necessarily you prioritize it to the top, but somewhere... It's One, on the list. two, three, four, five, yeah. ten, eleven. Somewhere you prioritize it. That's all. That's all it was intended to be. It was high level, but it was it was being picked apart. What's the Buck Amendment? The Buck Amendment was to um, take the the regional mobility pricing project, congestion pricing, tolling, take that off the fiscally constrained list and put it in the strategic list until ODOT provides the information that we have been waiting for for a long time and be prepared. And I've got more on that. That's another, that's another conversation for another day. But it, it isn't the way it's shaping up. Our RTAC meeting is on Monday. Yeah. Uh, we, I just got out of my prep meeting here uh, about an hour ago. And so, um, you know, the way things are shaping up is not pretty. And I'm hearing strongly between yet last week at the AOC conference and, and here that a lot of legislators are realizing that, that um, uh, there, a lot of inaction is going to result in no change. 
And then I have two more questions, and just maybe this is for the board as a whole, and definitely you commissioner's offices. It really sounds like there was a, a skinny packet, not a lot of public comments submitted. Um, it seems to be maybe a little bit of a dog and pony show for the purpose of having just another meeting. Why are we participating in this at this point, and what is the point of us being there? Yeah, why, I, why are we even? I hear a little bit in your statements, but the, we're busy people, and we got a lot of work to do for the county. I just, if we can't even get equitable balance for transportation on in just the gaps to be on the list, and it's you've been there for twenty five years. I mean, what what now? Like, what are we doing? I. I, I, I don't I don't I have a suggestion or two, but I think it's gonna it'll be another conversation. But I have I have a recommendation or two I'd like to talk to you all about at some point okay. um, about how we do this and um, approach it. But um, um, we'll, we'll get there. I'd be remiss to say this, um, so I'm gonna say this: is that the packet was online, so and it was a lot, right? And I, and I don't think there's any reason to discuss the entire packet. That's why I, the material I brought was relevant to the amendments and so forth. So, and I'm sure that I'm not going to dismiss the fact that those other folks around the table and their staff probably reviewed the packet. I'm not here claiming that they didn't, you know, all I'm saying is that at the table, at the last opportunity, uh, the way it was queued up, there was no material on, on the table. That, that's all I'm saying. I don't want to stretch any more than that, but it was just odd. And even the point that, like, Beyond just that packet comment you made, in the, in the, but everything else, like what? What's the point of this group? Like, what really is the point for Clackamas County? Like, what? I mean, your time is valuable. Our time is valuable. Like, at what point is it just like? The, what is the purpose here? This is getting a little bit, you know, just infuriating and insane. Yeah. I mean, if I was prepared today, what I would actually, I was just thinking, if I was prepared today, you know, visuals are powerful, right? Yeah. If I ch just showed you the, the transit line map of all the bus service in the region, and then you saw where the county line was, and you saw where all the county lines were, and I call it the spaghetti. All those lines, looks yeah. like a bowl of spaghetti. I cut, all the spaghetti is up at the top. And when you come to Clackamas County, there's nothing. There's very little, a right? Danglers. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple little things yesterday. When we do the transportation tour um, that our staff have done, we did one yesterday. Uh, we've been doing a lot of them, taking people from around the region around, showing them the Sunrise Corridor and showing them the, the I-205 project. Um, we do this thing. We get halfway through. I said, now to, we're going to do a bus count. Count how many buses you see on this two-hour and two-and-a-half-hour tour. Uh, so yesterday we did, I think I counted two buses in the whole two-and-a-half hours um, that we had saw, TriMet buses in the whole two-and-a-half two hours. It's not uncommon. I think the highest number was four. I think the lowest number was zero in, in you know, a, a wow. time or two on these, on these tours. But, you know, I took a, I was out uh, an hour and a half on, on the corner of 10th and Willamette Street here a while back, um, just about a few weeks ago with a gentleman from Portland. And we were talking, I'm showing him the, all, the, all the diversion. It was at 4.30 in the afternoon. And I go, so we've been here for an hour. I've been here for an hour and a half. And you've been here for an hour. How many buses have you seen? Zero. Zero during rush hour. The, support. Yeah. Another backward thing about the, tw the 2040 plan, I think I got to point this out, the backward thing, and I've always asked myself, that doesn't make any sense, but they based the regional centers on shopping centers, right? So the transportation is built where the shopping centers are. So you have a light rail line going to town center, Clackamas town center, you got a light rail line going to these, all these centers. But rush hours is people are going to work. And yeah. cer certainly people do work at the, at the shopping centers. I get that. But the employment centers are not the shopping centers. Yeah. I've always argued that if, we're, if we've got congestion at peak hour, where people are going back and forth to work, our transportation is not built on, not built on the, those destinations where people live and where people work. It's, it's where like they Wilsonville. shop. Wilsonville's an, an employment hub with a big industrial center. Yeah. It's, the city swells during the day with employment, like doubles in size, big industries out there. The, and there's very little real transportation to get people to and from work. Yeah. I, I, I believe the conversation that we need to have needs to be at this tenor, you know, calm, mm -hmm. rational, asking questions, not, not it shouldn't be rhetoric-based. 
uh, I think will be not, not effective. I think it needs to really be based on a, a, just a, a, a calm conversation, intellectual conversation, some deep thinking, and ask ourselves some questions on how we, how we change this for Clackamas County residents because are, are we a donor county? Are we actually, are we actually donating more of our monies mm -hmm. um, to the other part of the region at, at, at our detriment? Sounds like it to me. It sounds like the regional effort is not working well for us on transportation. Stop. That's my big takeaway. And Paul, I am more than willing to have this conversation at this level. I think, you know, down there, a round table or in, or in the room, and very much. And uh, I think that's important for us to consider moving forward. What, what do we want to do? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, Ben? Yeah, I think maybe, I think I'm still new, and I think maybe a refresher of whiteboard session um, and maybe like a meeting because we've done some good work where we just kind of have talks like this. We've done it in the in the um, conference room and there's a big whiteboard in there. Map out the players in transportation. I think that that visual is super important to see. Again, I'd be interested to like as we talk about this, it'd be maybe a, and we have further conversations, something like that and kind of our overall transportation strategy might be another good kind of, I don't know, lunch meeting or something, and maybe you could help continue to show us how that all works. I think it would be, for, at least for me, it would be beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, last I want to just say is I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Despite all this conversation, there's a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> so I wish everyone well, and I wish everyone a safe uh, Thanksgiving weekend and a great time with your friends and family. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Scholl, you're up. Yes, thank you. And good morning, Clackamas County. Uh, I'd like to talk to you on government for a moment. Um, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. The next day, most all of us will be looking at our diets and our waistline, but the federal government will not be. Many functions of the <laughs> expenditures of the f current federal government are unconstitutional. And we see that when we look at our tax bill, and many uh, constituents complain that it's very high. Um, uh, it's happened because the Congress has voted for it in direct violation of the Constitution. Congress has clearly strayed from the Constitution, and it must immediately return to adherence. Rather than exceed its clearly defined limitations, or proposing new constitutional amendments like a balanced budget amendment through an Article 5 convention, as some people suggest, Congress needs to boldly enforce the Constitution as written. People are getting tired of it, tired of waste, and uh, I urge everyone to contact your U.S. representative, your two senators, and urge them to take bold action to restore fiscal responsibility and slash all unconstitutional federal spending, and to do it now. Uh, if we could do that at all federal levels of government, state and county too, imagine how our family's prosperity and small business would thrive. So please sound off before the end of the year. Let's see what we can do on that. I know Measure 110 has been an issue that We've talked about so many times, and this board has taken action to stimulate thought in Salem on this problem, but it's time for the people to sound off again before the end of the year. Measure 110 equals failure, destruction, waste, carnage, and hopelessness. And Measure 110 subordinates the security of our children and our families to the coddling of drug use. Uh, two elements have made Measure 110 an absolute failure. One, it decriminalized hard drugs. Two, it made treatment voluntary, uh, voluntary treatment only. And that's no surprise. We need to go back to recriminalizing hard drugs. We need to have mandatory treatment. We need to crack down on drug distribution and the cartels. <laughs> and enforce public intoxication and public vagrancy laws. Uh, again, I think it's gonna take the people sounding off 
Does the governor need to call a special session to repeal Measure 110? Something needs to happen. It needs to happen now. Please take action and sound off. On Thanksgiving, uh, it's appropriate that we recall the first Thanksgiving celebrated in the autumn of 1621. Those pilgrims faced hardship and they were filled with hopes and dreams of finding freedom, liberty, and abundance in a new home that was often fr a frightening wilderness. On this Thanksgiving, 402 autumns later, we must reflect on the immeasurable labor and sacrifice those who have gone on before us exerted to create the nation that we call the United States of America. The blessings of the Creator providing this rich landscape we call home and the labor, devotion, and sacrifice of our forefathers that has left us with a constitution, a nation, and a way of life that we cherish, let us recommit ourselves to that same level of devotion to God and family that has played such an important role in making this a great nation and which will be needed as a source of strength if we are to remain a thriving nation. It is my hope that every resident of our county will enjoy a blessed day of Thanksgiving tomorrow. And with that, let us all actively commit to working to change what needs to be changed and to strengthen and sustain what is already contributing in a positive way to a healthy society. Happy Thanksgiving, Clackamas County. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Commissioner Shull. I would just like to say November is usually a challenging month for scheduling for the Board of County Commissioners. We have two observed holidays, and then last week we took off to attend the Associated of Oregon County's annual conference in Eugene. And it's where all the counties can come and network, and we learn about what other counties are doing, and they learn from us equally. We attend sessions, we have a vote, we elected new leadership going forward. And um, it's very interesting to hear from other counties how they're operating and what they're doing. And it's a good education opportunity, I think, for all of us. Uh, if anybody is interested in a job, Clackamas County has a website for job postings. So don't be bashful. It's a holiday season, but the jobs are still available. Submit your applications. And you never know, you may become a county employee one day. We have three business weeks left for the year, and then we take off for the Christmas vacation. That means we have three business meetings left for the year, and they will all be done in the morning. We made that decision. So anybody out there wanting to know what our schedule is, we have three weeks left. Uh, Monday night and then this afternoon, I will be meeting again with the tri-chairs of Multnomah, Washington County, and myself regarding the supported housing services tax and rollout from Metro. I am not privy to say everything, but commissioners, beware. There are new rumblings coming down the pike. And I can only assure you that the chairs from all three counties will fight for our county sovereignties as hard as we can. And that is an issue. And so where we're not sure what the situation is going to look like, uh, we're having this meeting. And then soon before the 15th, we will be meeting with Lynn Peterson on what she wants to do. So that's going to be very interesting. I can assure you, I think we're all on the same page as we move forward on this. And uh, I look forward to um, a briefing on that in a couple of weeks. I look forward to the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, it's changed for me over the years. I grew up on the farm, and my mother cooked everything. And she, I swear she cooked for two weeks before Thanksgiving dinner. Don't ask me how she did it. That is not my talent whatsoever. And so mom always cooked, and we always had a lot of people over. And then when she died several years ago, that entire tradition changed for me. 
And I really wasn't ready to accept being the vanguard of the Thanksgiving meal, although I did it. But I'm happy to say our younger generations have stepped up to the plate. And our, the next generation, the kids, you know, they're in their 30s now, uh, are stepping up and doing the Thanksgiving meal. And my daughter is having it at her house. And my daughter says, Mom, I'm going to do it my way. She says, OK. Although I still get to cook the turkey and bring it. It's totally fine. Mom, the biggest change we're going to do is no china that we have to wash. We're going to have paper plates. So as I enjoy my Thanksgiving meal on a paper plate, I will be thinking of my mother and my daughter and how differently they do things over the generation. And I will just be sitting there laughing the entire time. Thank you all for coming today. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And this meeting is adjourned.